Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it comes from a narration of a message that I received. And the message, it reads like this. Hello, Brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? I've come here on your platform so that I can tell you my own story of how we have been cooking donkey meat and people thinking that the donkey meat that we cook for them it will be beef so what happened was that when i came here to south africa i then started working for this other woman so this woman she has her own restaurant you know those street restaurants that will be close to the taxi ranks that is where i was working when i started working for that woman but she used to sell the pup and beef outside of the taxi rank but now we have managed to secure some space inside the taxi rank where there are a lot of customers and there is a lot of people who bewitch each other because for you to have your own restaurant inside the taxi rank this means that you'll be making a lot of money so her husband also has his taxi even at that rank they fear him a lot in that taxi association because of the charms that he uses to run his taxi business so when i was working for that woman this was before covid and then she was not okay health wise because of the witchcraft that takes place people feeling jealous when you are making a lot of money so they bewitch each other a lot after lockdown she felt so sick and she could no longer come to work and then i found out that there was this other woman who wanted to take a space so that she can have two restaurants there and i then fought with that woman and i started operating but uh, it was like 50 50 between me and my lady boss when she recovered she came back and she said that since you assisted me because i was about to lose my restaurant and you kept on working i am going to be in partnership with you we then started selling our food items inside the taxi rank that was when i spoke with this woman one day i was just having a casual conversation with her and i said since like now we do not have any money because when lockdown came we could no longer go to town so that we can sell the pop in because when covid came then our business started to suffer a lot even after covid a lot of people did not want to come and to buy food that was already cooked because they were still afraid of covid so this meant a loss of income for me and her i then spoke with her and i said since like beef it is really expensive right now i think it is far much better that we just cut corners and she said how exactly are we going to be cutting these corners because we cannot create beef meat out of thin air i then told her that i had this other brother of mine so my brother he works at, at this other game farm but uh, that farmer like what most of white farmers are doing in south africa they are no longer cultivating your crops and go with them to the market to sell them but what they do is that they just convert their farms so that they can start to look after wild animals like lions then the tourists that come then they can hunt those animals in those farms so i had my brother who, who is working at this other lion farm so my brother had once told me that the donkeys that they have on that farm those donkeys they are too many because what the white farmer does is that he feeds the donkeys to the lions so my brother's duty is that they take the donkeys then they go and then they slaughter them and they give the donkey meat to the lions so my brother had just told me about this and later on when i remembered about what type of a job it does i then spoke with my boss lady and they said look if i speak with my brother i know that he's going to agree for a price he can give us some of the donkey meat which will end up cooking and we will present it as beef and we are going to give people that will be coming to buy our pup a lot of this beef so that we can get a lot of customers and we will be making a lot of money
this woman then agreed and she said how are we going to go about it i then spoke with my brother first and when i spoke with my brother he said that he was going to get back to me and yes indeed he got back to me and he said that it was fine we could come and buy the donkey meat f from him but these things when we will be doing them we will only be doing it late at night when so at that farm where my brother is staying even some of the villagers that stay close to that farm if their donkeys get lost like they don't even bother themselves to go around looking for their donkeys but they just go into that farm then they just steal the donkeys my brother said that the way that these donkeys are reproducing and the way that they are many the white farmer he said that he does not care anymore even if some of the donkeys goes missing as long as there is enough donkey meat to be given to his lions he does not check my brother said that all that was needed was a car that we would use to carry the donkey meat back to town so i spoke with that woman and she spoke with her husband the first time when we went to collect the donkey meat my brother said just give me at least uh, the whole day i am going to take a donkey then we i will go and we'll slaughter that donkey and i will cut it into several pieces because we do not want the bones we just want the tender steak so he said that he was going to prepare everything but it was going to take him the whole day so after my brother he had told me that they had gone and take and they had taken a donkey and they had slaughtered that donkey and the meat was ready all that was needed was the money that we were going to pay him because he does not work alone he works with his other friends so i then went and i spoke with that woman she spoke with her husband uh, the first time when we went to that farm we were using the husband's baki that he had at that time then we went and we collected the meat so we did not get the whole donkey meat but we just took a little bit we, we just wanted to sample to see we just wanted to experiment to see if people were going to notice that this is not beef but this is donkey meat we returned back to the location and we prepared the next day we then went to work to the taxi rink we cooked and we cooked that donkey meat to our surprise a lot of people they came because we were giving them extra extra and after we had seen that this donkey meat that we had cooked on that day it was all finished and still there were a lot of people that kept on coming back and asking for some more we then spoke with my brother again and he told us that it was going to take him the whole day again to prepare more meat for us so we now have a lot of customers and more customers means more money and there are many times at the taxi rank when it will be so full the way that people will come and queue for the food at just at our restaurant most of the taxi drivers will start to complain because some of them will be blocking uh, the way so that the taxis that will be entering into the taxi rank they won't find space because people will be queuing just to come and buy this pup and the donkey meat so they think that they will be buying the pup and beef stew but this is my own confession brother nashi your dear listeners right there was a message that was sent to me by our sister and this is the translation of that message that she sent to me. Strange things do happen in this world. Then there is another message also that was sent to me. The message, it reads like this. Hello, Brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? My brother, I lost everything when I was working for this other man. So when I was working for that man, he was an Indian man who had his own hardware as well as a wholesale. So this man, I started working for him as his Dhaka boy, you know, like you are the builder's assistant. So he came to me one day when he had came to see if we were doing proper things. So he came and he spoke with our boss so when he looked at me that was when he came to where i was busy mi mixing the sand and the cement and then he spoke with me and he said do you want a job and i said yes i do want a job but he said speak silently i do not want your boss to know that i want to offer you a job 
he said as soon as you would have finished building my house i want you to work for me and he said i can see that you are quite a strong man so i started working for that man and when i was working for for that man this was before he had came to stay at that house what happened was that i was then taken and i then became a security so that when i won't be waking at his house i would go and i would become a security at this other muslim school so whilst i was working there that was when one day there was this other woman who was an indian woman who, who was also the wife to that man that i was working for she came because earlier on in the day there was an in event and she came later on and she said that she had lost her ring so when she said that she had lost her ring she said that i should look for it and if i was going to find it i should give it back to her because it was very expensive so after that woman had left i went to the area where i knew that this is the place where they had been doing the event earlier on in the day i searched for it and i searched for it when i had almost given up that was when i saw uh, the ring and i took it and she had told me that i was not supposed to inform the husband because the husband most of the times he was always angry and always shouting and i think that he used to beat up the wife as well so i waited for her she returned back the next day and she asked me if i had found the ring i told her that indeed i had found a ring and she, and she told me that she was going to find a way to pay me so then there was this other day when i was at their house the one that i was looking after i had her car she came and she parked her car and she walked into the yard and i went outside and she told me to follow her when i followed her this woman she then tempted me so that i can sleep with her i slept with her i did not want to resist the temptation because this was the first time to ever sleep with an indian woman but i didn't know that i was being trapped and after i had slept with her that was the last time that i ever slept with her again so it then happened that after they had moved in i then became their private security guard so one night this man he left for church and when he returned back he started to do things that were very inappropriate to me and i resisted him and i told him that this is not what i wanted to do and this was not the type of a man that i was because he came to the place where i was because this man he had told me that when i go out i want you to salute me when i come back you have to salute to salute me as well so when i had gotten up from where i was sitting he walked to the place where i was standing busy saluting him and he grabbed my manhood just like that so this made me to to feel really bad because this was not the type of a man that i was so after he had grabbed me this man he then walked into his yard and then he started to talk with me over the phone he called me and he apologized to me and he told me that everything that he had done he was really sorry he did not mean to do the things that he had done to me and i said it is fine but i never felt comfortable anymore working for him so one day he called me to his hardware i went to his hardware and i found out that he was not there and then he called me after I had left his hardware he told me that he was at this other place and when i went there to the place where he told me that he was having a business meeting i saw that it was a guest house i went in there and i spoke with a lady who was at the reception and she then directed me at the room where my boss was at i went into that room and he told me to get into the into that room and he said that he was waiting for one of his business partner so i sat there and i was feeling very uncomfortable poverty my brother will make you to do things that you do not even want when i was in that room with him that was when he told me that he knew that i had slept with his wife and he was going to look for people that were going to kill me unless if i was going to do whatever that he wanted with me so that was when the abuse started yes brother nashi I was abused i was raped by another man from that day onwards whenever he felt like it he'll just do whatever that he wanted with me it was only after 
I had spoken with his wife about this issue when she that was when she told me that she knew that a husband was someone who was attracted to men and when he found out that me and her we had slept together he said that he was going to punish me so this was his way of punishing me so after that man's wife had told me that this guy he was into dating other guys i then thought of running away the problem was that i did not have a bank account and i used to trust him a lot so each and every month he would only give me money to buy clothes as well as to buy some food so he had all my money and i had told him that i you should give me boss my money at the end of the year when i'll be going back to zim so he knew that if he did not give me my money there was no way i was going to get the money to escape this man the day that he found out that i wanted to escape that was when he got me arrested i got arrested this was like for two years what pains me the most is that he was using his lawyers to make sure that i won't go to court because i stayed in police remand this was for more than a year when i was just staying at the police station being told that tomorrow you are going to court then you'll be told that the court has been postponed maybe six months later you'll be told that you are supposed to go to court but then when you are about to go then you will be told that then the court has been postponed it was only after one year and a few months that was when i was taken to court it was when i was taken to court but i never served my prison sentence because after that i was taken back to the holding cells and i waited the next time when i stood in front of the judge that was when the case was dismissed even up until this day i don't even know the reason as to why i got arrested after i got released i was then deported since i did not have any papers i lost everything i truly lost everything and it hurts me whenever i think about my wife and everything that this man did to me your oh, dear listeners right there was a message that was sent to me by our dear brother that was the translation of his message Strange things do happen in this world.